the Boeing. 7-5 the 7th of May, not have the fame of the Queen 747, nor did it have a distinctive success etched into aviation history, but it's a plane cherished by pilots and passengers alike. Its career wasn't dazzling, but its charm and reliability made it strangely beloved. Late October 2004 marked the end of production for this gorgeous aircraft, even though its design was far more advanced than the 737 at the time, but why was it discontinued? What if Boeing had updated the 757 instead of focusing on the 737 MAX? Let's explore. To understand the 757 and why its era came to an end, it's essential to look back at its history. It has been over four decades since the Boeing. 757 first took flight. Developed as a successor to the Boeing 727, it may not have been the best-selling single-aisle aircraft in Boeing's history, but it has continued to serve in commercial operations and cargo transport to this day. At the time, it was named the 7N7, a twin-engine jet succeeding the three-engine 727, with the first order placed on August the 19th, 78. The prototype made its first flight on February 19, 1982, and received FAA certification on December 21, 1982. Eastern Airlines introduced the first 757-200 variant into commercial service on January 1, 1983. A full freighter variant entered service on September 19, 87, followed by a combined Model 757-200 PAX freighter on September 19, 88. Compared to the 727, this aircraft boasted a much larger underwing space, allowing for the integration of new, larger, and more efficient engines. These aerodynamic advancements, combined with modern engines, enabled the aircraft to deliver over 30% better fuel efficiency than its predecessor. With its higher cabin and extended wingspan, it could carry up to 240 passengers and operate efficiently on long-haul routes without the need for refueling stops. However, when the 757 was introduced in 1982, a significant drop in oil prices led many airlines to continue using their older aircraft or opt for smaller models like the DC-9 or MD-80. This resulted in disappointing initial sales for the 757, even though by the late 1980s, the aviation boom and growing congestion at airports drove a surge in demand. Boeing ceased production of this aircraft in 2004, with a total of 1,050 frames produced during its manufacturing run. Most of these were the 757-200 variant, while a smaller number were the extended variant 300. Even as these aircraft approach their 25th anniversary, more than 500 of them remain in active service with 47 different airlines around the world. So why was the production of the 757 discontinued? First, the design of this Boeing aircraft became too specialized for market demands. While it was created to operate efficiently in harsh conditions and with long range, these features gradually became less relevant as airlines shifted towards smaller, more fuel-efficient aircraft. As a result, despite being beloved for its performance and versatility, the Boeing aircraft was unable to maintain its position in an aviation industry that was rapidly evolving. Additionally, the wing design of the Boeing 757-100 was a key factor in the decision to discontinue production. Its wings were larger than necessary and its payload capacity exceeded actual demand. This led to higher operating costs for this aircraft, particularly on short flights, or routes where the full capacity was not utilized. Meanwhile, competitors like the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737 were able to reduce operating costs due to designs optimized for shorter routes and moderate payloads. It's also worth noting that the large wing design of the 757-100 created difficulties in maintenance and operations at smaller airports, where the infrastructure was insufficient to meet the requirements of this aircraft. The second reason is that maintaining the production line for the Boeing 757 became economically unfeasible as the number of orders sharply declined. The cost of maintaining such a production line, including labor, equipment maintenance, and material costs, could no longer be effectively allocated when only a small number of aircraft were being produced. This led to an increase in the cost of manufacturing each aircraft, making it no longer profitable as before. At the same time, the U.S. manufacturer was also focusing its resources on more important projects such as the 787 Dreamliner, a strategic product line with greater profit potential, making the continued production of this aircraft even less viable. Therefore, 
this company decided to halt 757 production and shift its investment towards new aircraft programs with a higher competitive potential in the market. Thirdly, after the September 11th attacks, the U.S. aviation industry entered a severe and prolonged crisis, leading to a significant downturn across the entire sector. Passenger numbers sharply declined due to heightened fear of flying, causing many airlines to face financial difficulties. Several airlines were forced to either go bankrupt or merge with partners to reduce operational costs. In this context, the demand for new aircraft dropped significantly, prompting airlines to delay plans for fleet purchases or, or replacements. Despite the Boeing 757 still being highly regarded for its performance and operational capabilities, it was not prioritized during this crisis period. Airlines shifted focus to maintaining their existing fleets, minimizing costs, and postponing investments in new aircraft, which led to a sharp decline in new aircraft orders. This contributed to Boeing's decision to cease production of the 757 in order to alleviate the economic pressure of maintaining a production line with few orders. Next, another reason is the continuous development of the Boeing 737 series, which has overshadowed the position of the 757. The manufacturer has consistently upgraded the 737 lines to better meet market demands, especially with newer versions like the 737 Next Gen and later the Max. These versions are more efficient and almost capable of replacing the 757 on many routes. When airlines compare operational costs, pilot training, and the ability to serve various types of routes, they find that the 737 series is the more economical choice. This accelerated Boeing's decision to stop producing it, as demand for this aircraft continued to decline. Finally, Competition from Airbus was another significant factor contributing to the discontinuation of the Boeing 757. Aircraft models like the Airbus A320 and A321 quickly dominated the market due to their superior fuel efficiency and lower operating costs compared to the Boeing aircraft. This allowed airlines to save costs in an increasingly competitive environment with growing pressure to reduce expenses. Airbus's aircraft not only featured modern designs, but also had greater flexibility in operating on various routes, from short to medium haul flights, making them more attractive to airlines. With these advantages, Airbus attracted a large customer base, while the Boeing 757 became less appealing due to its inability to compete in terms of cost effectiveness, especially as the market shifted its focus toward fuel efficiency and lower operational costs. In your opinion, is fuel efficiency and lower operating costs enough to make an aircraft like the 757 less appealing, or are there other factors at play? Please let us know. But wait for a minute. Over 90% of our viewers are continuously watching without subscribing. If you enjoy the latest news and in-depth analysis of the aviation industry, be sure to hit the subscribe button to get the freshest updates from us every day. Join our community of close viewers and continue this journey of sharing valuable information. Thank you so much for being a great source of motivation for us. Although production ceased in 2004, the Boeing 757 remains a legend in the aviation industry. It continues to operate on numerous routes, especially those requiring high performance or at airports with challenging conditions. Pilots and passengers alike still appreciate this aircraft for its stability, robustness, and exceptional operational capabilities. However, in today's modern commercial aviation world where operational cost and economic efficiency are paramount, legends like this aircraft have gradually been replaced by more modern and optimized designs. Despite this, it has left a significant legacy in aviation. It demonstrated that an aircraft could combine outstanding performance, long-range capability, and high passenger capacity within a narrow-body design. Today, airlines and manufacturers continue to learn from the lessons of the 757, from its aerodynamic wing design to the use of lightweight materials for fuel efficiency. With hundreds of these gorgeous aircraft still in service worldwide, it will continue to operate for many more years. It is not only a part of aviation history, but also a testament to the innovation and adaptability of the industry. Apart from the points mentioned in today's video, what do you think made the Boeing 757 a legend that many people still talk about today? Please let us know your thoughts. When this U.S. manufacturer ceased production of the 757 in 2004, the aviation industry was left grappling with a significant gap.
there was no true replacement for this iconic aircraft. While models like the Boeing 737 could handle short-haul routes, they fell short of meeting the demands for long-range flights and heavier payloads that the 757 had excelled at. This created a void in the mid-range aircraft segment, particularly for transatlantic routes or those requiring substantial cargo capacity without necessitating the use of wide-body jets. And this is the time for fierce competition to dominate the mid-range market. In recent years, aircraft manufacturers have been racing to fill this void. Airbus has made significant strides with the launch of the A321XLR, a long-range version of the A321neo, boasting intercontinental capabilities and remarkable fuel efficiency. Meanwhile, Boeing has been researching a new concept called the new mid-size airplane, NMA. However, progress has been slow, with no official plans announced due to financial constraints and shifting market demands. As Airbus continues to secure a growing number of orders for the XLR, airlines have increasingly turned to this model to address the gap left by the 757. On the other hand, Boeing continues to grapple with issues surrounding its 737 MAX and 777X programs, prompting industry observers to question whether the company can regain its position in this crucial market segment. The Boeing 757 was far from a failure. It was a product ahead of its time. To pilots, passengers, and aviation enthusiasts, the aircraft remains an icon, a steadfast workhorse known for its durability, power, and reliability. What do you think about this legendary aircraft? Have you ever flown on a 757? Do you have any memorable experiences with it? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, and may your journeys always be safe and enjoyable.